Hello, welcome to Brimwood Farm and another farm vlog. Uh, so we are here up at the land on this beautiful day um, to just kind of chill out. Uh, we're going to walk around and sort of plan out our future, where some stuff is going to go. Um, do a little bit of work, do some pond restoration stuff. Just have a lovely day in the sun. job today is continuing with the pond restoration this is all the stuff that we've taken out so far and I took out this patch as well and you can see that we've cleared a lot from around the pond so it's actually nice that the sun is shining so you can actually see the sun's coming down in it now I'm gonna get this log out and I think we're just gonna start with this corner because it's a big pond we haven't got the money or the time or the means to do the whole pond in one go. So I think as the sun is coming down on this bit, I've got a few pond plants with me, like four, but you can see that this water is mainly stagnant. So it's mainly stagnant water. So what I want to do is I want to get in, I want to dig out a lot of this leaf thing, because it's rotting leaves and it's making the water worse. And then I've got literally, I'll show you in a minute, I've got four pond plants that I've bought uh, with the money that was kindly donated through Patreon. Um, so I've got uh, water planting, water mint, yellow iris, and a water forget-me-not. So what we'll do is we'll get them in here, and that will just allow them to start colonizing the area and creating some much needed oxygen for this water. Obviously we also need to get all of this dead logs out because these dead logs, you know, one or two dead logs in a pond is a good thing. It's a whole new uh, ecosystem, it offers a place for frogs and things to sit on, uh, shelter, but in this pond there is far too much of it. So that's the plan for today, just to continue concentrating on this bit. I want to get this tree out, I want to get that tree out, I want to start to cut down this tree. It's a really, really nice hawthorn. So I'm not going to take it completely out, I'm going to keep this one branch in that we've got at the front, and then I'm going to take the rest of the stuff out the back, so we've just got one coming up. Um, I want to take out that tree behind if I get time, and start cutting back some more of this bramble but that's the main job for today I wonder if we can just walk through here a little bit as well it's just oh it's so nice to see sun on on the pond it gives me hope that we can turn it into a little thriving ecosystem there's also some lovely cowslips down here that were before obviously were shaded away but now we can see them in their proper beauty. And there's lots of arrow plant, some lovely uh, mosquitoes flying around there. But for now, we're going to have a picnic first and then we're going to start some work. Yeah, it's a youngster. 
So we're just hanging out with the cows. There's a really fresh baby over there. It's kind of hard to imagine that this is currently a cow shed and then hopefully in two years time this whole place will actually be our house. So the cows will have to move out so that we can move in. Where is Elise? There's, there she is, she's over there with Sard, look. <laughs> Don't scare the cow, darling. This is uh, post deer chase. She just spotted a deer and disappeared, so now she's hot and bothered. Come then, let's go. So I've popped the plants in now, so the yellow flag iris. And obviously you can plant the crowns a lot deeper than the water. They don't need to be right in the periphery. Especially as this, as I said, this area does actually dry out. So in the summer, this will be a bog rather than an actual pond bit. So that's fine. Um, the forget-me-not is here. Again, it's a little bit small. So it's planted on the bottom and its leaves are only just reaching the top. Here's the plantain. And then the, the mint. Oh, almost went in the pond, guys. Uh, the mint, you can only just see, it's actually down here. It's below the water, because again, it's not quite that tall, but it's a water plant, so it's quite okay, and that will actually invigorate it to grow up towards the surface and pop through. So we've got those four plants. Obviously, I'm going to get more, and I'm going to fall in the pond again. This is good. We're going to get more. Each time we come up, we'll probably add some more, but hopefully now. Now we have cleared this out, and we've actually got some sunlight coming down onto this patch. Um, we should hopefully be able to start oxygenating this weed with Sard looking on there. Uh, oxygenating this water, getting more and more plants in and hopefully bringing a bit of life back to this pond. So I'm going to leave working on the pond for a bit and I thought what we'd do is walk around the farm and talk about a little about our plans uh, for when we move. So this is the back meadow. It's always been known as the back meadow. Um, and I can't tell you how many acres it is because I'm not entirely sure. So there's 40 acres overall uh, and it's split up into one, two, three, four, five fields. So this is the back meadow. And so the idea for the back meadow is this is going to be our rotational pa pasture beds. Uh, so our house will be there where that barn is. Um, and then this field and the hill meadow, which is over there, are going to be our two main pasture beds uh, so what I don't what I originally wanted to do was just obviously how I thought farming was I wanted to fence the whole lot um, and just let the animals in but having watched a lot of wonderful homesteaders on YouTube uh, and learned a lot from them I figured actually rotational pasture is far better so I want to graze sheep and cows together in small paddocks and move it on day by day and then bring in chickens afterwards. So you've got a whole ecosystem going with the cows eating the longer grass, the sheep eating this, uh, the smaller, lower grass, and then the chickens coming in a couple of days later to uh, turn over the cow pats and the sheep poo and eat all the flies and help keep the fly uh, numbers down. Um, for anybody that wondered what that bang was, our neighbors have got a bird scare in their field. It keeps going off, it's very loud. I don't really like it. 
So that's the back meadow for you and the hill meadow which is over there. So they'll both be pasture beds and our other, our other pond is also up there. So in the distance you can kind of see this tree, that is where our other pond is. So we have a pond here and we have a natural pond over there. This field uh, is, is a fairly small field, maybe five acres or something. Um, and it's kind of difficult to get to, it's right at the corner. Even as kids, we hardly ever came up to this field. I'm thinking this is gonna be our hay field. Um, we might graze animals on this occasionally, but to be honest, it's so out of the way and it would need quite a bit of work doing to it for access that we will probably use it as our hay field to start with. That's the nice thing with having all this land. Hopefully we can grow as much of our own personal hay as possible. Um, and it will mean that we can ex keep expenses down. It will also mean that we might be able to sell some hay um, to other businesses and also gift hay to friends, you know, farming friends where you can just turn up and be like, hey, here, have some hay from us. Um, so through here, this is our, actually my neighbours now. So it used to be our front meadow. It's now um, a beautiful orchard of apple trees. I've just noticed the most beautiful clump of flowers down here. Look at these. Isn't that stunning? These lovely primroses just sat here in a ditch. Beautiful. So that's the kind of the idea for those three main fields. So two pasture fields and a hay field. Um, and then let's walk over to the pit and the wildflower meadow and I can talk a little bit about what we're wanting to do there. So coming up here is obviously the car and where our house will be. Um, and this section here is gonna be the ornamental pheasant tree and Sard's Birds of Prey Centre. So since I started working at the farm park, um, many of you know that Sarge has also started volunteering at the Birds of Prey Centre and he is really good with Birds of Prey. He has found his calling. He's in his element, he loves it, but he is extremely good with birds that need a lot of intelligence and caring for. So I, I'm really a proud of him but also I kind of really think he can do this so we want to have the birds of prey center here so he's probably going to have offices kitchen and stuff down here and then he'll have his birds here uh, on their bow perches and then in there we'll have uh, the, like the malt aviaries and the weathering aviaries where they're out all year round and then up here we'll have our pheasantry so our pens of pheasants a lovely little comma butterfly. I don't know whether it's gonna no it's flitted away. So our pheasant tree will be here and then our house will be here so our mud room will come out here and then the aim is that this field will be our main market garden. Um, so our windows from most of our property will look out this way and our market farm garden will be here because the water sourcing will be close to the house so we won't have water sourcing um, issues and it also means it's right there in terms of picking, boxing up, washing stuff, wash stations, loading up into vans and stuff like that. So that's going to be in here and then the rest of this field uh, we're not sure yet. It may probably, it probably will be more pasture because we're going to be doing more animals than crops so it will be probably more, more pasture. Um, but I'll pasture on the other two land, on the other two fields first to give me, myself room to expand with the market farm because I don't know how much room, how many beds I want to put over to that. And then finally, this is our good old normal camping spot with a huge dung of manure. Our um, wildflower meadow is over there. So that's the wildflower meadow. And then we're going to be planting a, uh, wood over there as well. And then in here is going to be much like this. It's going to stay as a sort of a camping area with areas to pick herbs and stuff. Here is going to be our nuttery. So that's something we're going to start this year. We're going to take all of this bramble out, uh, have a buddlier hedge and start planting nut trees on that side. So that's going to be a, a nuttery. And then the pit is hopefully 
going to also kind of be a pheasant tree um, and a sort of tropical garden. We also want to put in a man-made waterfowl pond down here. So this floods heavily in the winter. So we want to extend it and create a man-made pond in here. We're going to terrace steps down so you can come down. This is going to be landscape so there is uh, a nice fence all the way along. And then we're going to dig this all out. It's closest to the road which is nice because it means we can get diggers and things in. We're going to dig all of this out and make a man-made uh, pond in there so that we can have our ornamental waterfowl, maybe a couple of pairs of black swans um, and keep all of that down there as well. We also got to keep it semi-wild so our bluebell wood is through there. There we get a lot of deer down here, we get badgers down here so it's going to be kind of a semi-wild, semi sort of tropical um, garden. So when I say tropical gardens I mean we're going to plant things like uh, ferns and flocks uh, flax rather, New Zealand flax, uh, maybe some palms and things like that. So it gives it a tropical edge, um, but it's still wilderness and it's still wildlife friendly. And then obviously the steps down and the pond. So that's kind of a brief tour of the farm and a few ideas of the plans. A lot of work is involved and this is, you know, this is decades of work. So it probably won't even be all completed in our lifetimes, but hopefully we can hand the plan over to something else. And the nice thing is I can do it all on YouTube and I can show you all as we go along and we finish it off. Um, so I'm going to go and do a little bit more work on that pond and uh, enjoy the rest of the sunshine. So thank you for joining me for another farm vlog. I'm just in my element here. I absolutely love it and I love sharing it with you because I just think it's beautiful land uh, and we have this big dream and you guys actually help facilitate it because without you I'd just be coming up and I'd just be doing bits and pieces here and there but because you guys spur me on and comment and like and stuff like that it makes me actually want to come up even more and do more and more and more work. So actually, you and YouTube as a whole kind of community are helping me build this farm, which is amazing. Um, so thank you again. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos. Uh, hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. If you're on Facebook, then please feel free to come over to Broomwood Farms community page and join us. And uh, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of the day. So I'll see you later. Bye-bye.